Hey everyone, it's Stonebed, and uh, I want to try something a little bit different today. Um, as most of you know, I played for a long time between the end of Unlimited all the way to the end of the Invasion Block where I retired. We didn't have a lot of uh, drafting in that time period. There was only really one format until around the end of Ice Age when they introduced Type 2. Really dating myself, but that's okay. Uh, I mostly played what you would call Type 1 back in those days with the limited cod pools that we had. Cods were challenging to come by. They didn't get a lot of massive prints, but we managed to get the cods that we needed between trading. Uh, there was a lot of great stores back then that we were able to get singles. I remember buying my first mocks for 50 bucks. I said that, 50 bucks. I remember Buying my, buying my first Lotus, because I came in at the end of an Unlimited, so I wasn't able to really get my hands on one. So I had to break down and buy one. So my first Lotus was $75. I'm letting you sink that in for a second. $75, guys. Pack Fresh Mint. Played that card forever in my deck. Until I retired. When I retired, I dropped off a ton of dual hands from Unlimited and Revised. You know, I dropped off a Mox and a Lotus, and tons and tons of great uncommons and rares. Enough to buy a nice car. And I walked away from the game very unhappy. You know, I, I walked away from the game because I was unhappy. But what I got in value, and compared to what I invested, I definitely made a profit. And I didn't come back to the game for a very, very long time. Every once in a while, my friends would try to talk me into playing. I'd say, hand me a deck, I'll play, but I'm not buying any nonsense. This went on for a very long time, and then a friend of mine introduced me to... Magic Arena. I fell in love with that program, made me fall in love with Magic again, made me remember how much I used to love making decks, the creative process involved in it, and uh, I enjoy playing again, and I get a little excited about new releases. So here we are, October, you know, August 21st. We have a little bit of information about Zendikar Ryzen. I don't know if anybody else has released this information. I just want to go over it a little bit with you guys and give you a little bit of perspective from somebody who played way, way, way back in the day. Only did probably two drafts, maybe three. And, uh... So, they're changing as they always change something when they come out with a new set these days. I've started to notice that there's always these themes or these flavors of the month or the color of the month or theme of the month. So, uh, here we are. I don't know if we're ever going to really be able to sit down in real life and do any real drafting. But here we are. They're talking about Some set mechanics. And they're talking about a brand new mechanic that will be a variation on a popular theme. We'll also be uh, returning to a couple of mechanics. Then they go on to talk a bit about the boosters and how they're trying to tell a story in the type of cards that we get in our boosters. This takes us back to a time when that was kind of what Magic was trying to do a long, long time ago. It used to try to tell a story when you opened up a pack. 
So here we see in Zendikar Rising, we have a signature honest in card. That's kind of cool. We have a Lancelot, which we've always kind of had a Lancelot. There was a time where you only, you know, when they stopped doing it, I think that was around Mirage. They, the only way you could get basic land was if you bought a starter deck or a reconstructed deck. I think they started doing pre-constructed and Tempest block. It's been a long time, so forgive me and my memory. You know, we have three to eight commons and uncommons. We have what they're calling a firework section, a card that looks different than a normal card. Either it's a showcase card or something special. Slot 10 and 11 will either be some kind of wild card, so that can be a rarity or a any rarity comet, uh, common up to a mythic. So, I don't know, I'm a little skeptical about that section. Of course, we have our rare and mythic slot, which we're supposed to have. We're also seeing that there's a slot 13 for foil. And of course, the nonsense, we gotta have the tokens and all that stuff. So they just giving us cards. Like we use pennies or other, you know, or gems or stuff that we have from laying around. We didn't need a token card. So here we go. So we're talking a little bit about. Here we go. So the block mechanics, it looks like we're returning to some landfall abilities. That'll be kind of cool. I never got a chance to do a lot of landfall stuff. A couple of friends of mine who stuck around in the game made some landfall decks and I played a couple of those and it seemed like an interesting concept but there, to me it kind of felt like something was missing like they didn't support the mechanic enough. It was like, hey, let's do this. Ah, never mind. But, <laughs> sorry guys, I sometimes think that Wizard has a very short attention span to certain mechanics. So the cards and land of magic, quests, or enchantment cards that specify certain conditions. When those conditions are filled, you added a quest counter to them and you will hand the necessary counters you could use to their abilities. Quests will be divided into three cycles, expeditions, quest, and ascensions. That's an interesting concept, but there'll probably be like four or five casting cost cards. <laughs> Traps, I don't like this. It may sound like you're, we started playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, it does. I'm sorry. So I'm not really sure how I feel about this mechanic. What do you guys think about adding traps to a, a game that already has so many crazy mechanics? Uh, I remember seeing some of these kind of cards. A friend of mine has a couple of them in a deck that he plays. So we'll see some cards that are going to have levels. So now we're playing D and D. <laughs> okay. This is a nice picture. I love art. So I've always been somebody who enjoys Magic's art. Here's another mechanic. Think of rebound keywords as echo. Once you play a spell with rebound, it was exiled instead of going into the graveyard and can be recast during your next turn without paying its casting cost. It was introduced in Rise of Eldrazi. Really? 
Okay. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> I think he was operating on that dog back there, which we're not supposed to notice. Ooh, talking about shock lands. We got shock lands in Ravica, Zendigar, or its original set. Hopefully, we'll see some fetch lands, or at least some other form of non basic lands. And Zentacon. It's also a set that introduced Lance Ball, so this person seems to feel that maybe it'll be the landfall that will help us fix our color situation, because I don't think we're going to see any good, and I really want to emphasize good, shock lands throughout, you know, dual. Shock lands for a very long time to come. I was surprised when they reprinted them, to be very honest. But I think they did that because they were starting to go up very high in price. And they didn't want them to become like the original dual lands. But I don't think we're going to see any good shock dual lands for a very long time. So what do you guys think? All these special packs, special draft packs, regular booster packs, you know, collect the boosters, of course, we can't get away from trying to ask for a little extra money for something that they're printing anyway. <laughs> That's my opinion. Are you guys excited about Zendika? I'm excited about Zendika because I am dying for the meta to get a bit of a refresher. I get a little tired of seeing the same old decks every day. That's why I started playing Standard 2021 when they gave it to it to, gave us that option on Magic Arena, and that's pretty much where I've been for a while. I will be doing a couple of regular standard deck creations before they're gone. Because I did enjoy the format. I just needed to get away from it for a while because of this Sabo story. So what do you guys think about Zendikar? What do you think about all the changes to the packs? Do you like the idea? Do you think... Uh, Things will be better. Are you looking forward to some new mechanics? Some old mechanics that have been fixed or refreshed? Tell me what you guys think. This is Stone Bear. Normally I do Magic the Gathering. Best of one. Some people say I do Jank. That's fine. Some people say I see you the decks online and then try to fix them to my own style that's fine some people say i play too much black there ain't no such thing as too much black my friends no such thing please remember to like and subscribe to my page leave some comments tell me what you're thinking tell me what you're thinking about zendikar rising till next time this has been storm bear saying We'll see you next time in a place that looks like Magic the Gathering Arena and not a webpage that talks about an upcoming set. Be well, everyone. Take care.